Hi everybody and welcome to a new episode of Diagnose Dan. Today we are working on a 2014 Peugeot 208 with a 1.2 liter 3 cylinder engine. And I diagnosed this car today and it has got a PO420 stored and uh, I want to take you guys through the steps I took to diagnose this car and in the meanwhile let's try to learn something about catalytic converters and O2 sensors. Well, first of all, let's read the fault codes. So, let's see. And I already got the scanner hooked up. And it's actually a PO420. And the description is in Dutch. I will translate for you guys. It says, uh, catalytic converter system efficiency below threshold bank 1. So before we start diagnosing this PO420, let's familiarize ourselves with this system. Over here, we've got our uh, catalytic converter. And on top, over here, we've got our upstream O2. And down there is our downstream O2. Now notice how close this cat and this O2 are mounted to the cylinder head. That's done with the reason this cat and this O2 need heat before they start to function. So the closer they are mounted to the cylinder head, the faster they will heat up. Now, something that's very important for us to know is what kind of O2 sensor are we dealing with? And we are dealing with a conventional O2 sensor. So no white bed sensor. And uh, there actually was a heat shield over this uh, catalytic converter which I removed so I uh, could show you guys what this system looks like. Now before we can diagnose this PO420 we first have got to learn what a catalytic converter is doing. Now I cannot cover all the specifics in this video. I will do that later in an educational video. In this video, I will actually keep it very basic and very, very simple and easy to understand for you guys. Now, what you have got to remember is that a catalytic converter can store oxygen. Now, when a lean mixture enters the cat over here, in this lean mixture, there's actually too much oxygen. Makes sense, right? Lean mixture, too much oxygen. Now, what this cat will do is take the oxygen out of the mixture and store it into this element. Now when this mixture leaves the cat, it's no longer lean because the oxygen is over here. Now when a rich mixture enters the cat over here, there's actually not enough oxygen in that mixture. Now what the cat will do is release the oxygen into the mixture. So when the mixture leaves, the cat is no longer rich. Now what we should see on this side of the cat is a rich, lean, rich, lean, rich, lean mixture. And on this side of the cat we should see an evened out, smooth mixture. Now to diagnose this catalytic converter we can actually use its own O2 sensors. Now what we must remember that on this particular car they use conventional O2 sensors so no white bed sensors. So what this sensor will do is produce a voltage between 0 and 1 volt. 1 volt being a very rich mixture and 0 volts being a very lean mixture. Now I told you guys that in front of the cat the mixture is switching between rich, lean, rich, lean. So what we should see on the signal wire of this O2 sensor is it's switching between 0 and 1, 0, 1, 0, 1 and in between. You get the idea, right? Now, I told you guys that behind the cat we got a smooth and even mixture. Now, if 1 volt is a very rich mixture and 0 volts is a very lean mixture, we would want to see something in between like around half a volt. Now, 
If this cat is working properly, we should see this voltage switching between 0 and 1, and this one steady around half a volt. Now imagine the cat is doing nothing, it's not even there. Then both sensors will read the same. They will switch up and down together. Now let's see what we have got on our car. Well, this is the actual scan data of the upstream O2 sensor. You see it's switching between lean and rich, just like I told you guys. Um, this is the actual voltage, switching between 0 and 0 0.965 volts. So beautifully, nothing wrong with our upstream O2 sensor. So this is the actual scan data of our downstream O2 sensor. You see a steady voltage over there. So I told you guys, a steady voltage on the uh, downstream O2 sensor and a switching upstream O2 sensor. Uh, we've got a good catalytic converter, but still we have got a code on the converter. So uh, let's look at the details. Look at the numbers of this downstream O2 sensor. I told you guys that we should see something around half a volt and there's almost no voltage there. So this downstream O2 sensor is actually the sensor the computer uses to diagnose the catalytic converter. So have we got a uh, O2 sensor problem or do we have got a broken uh, catalytic converter? So let's hit the throttle a little and see if the numbers change. Well, the upstream still switching and almost no change on the downstream. When we took a look at our scan data, we actually saw our upstream O2 sensor switching between lean and rich like it is supposed to do, so nothing wrong with our upstream O2 sensor. When we took a look at our downstream O2 sensor, I told you guys that it should read something around half a volt. So 400 millivolts, 500 millivolts, 600 millivolts, but around half a volt. Well, it was actually packed out around zero volts. So is this sensor really reading a lean condition or have we got a sensor problem? So I want to do a little test and uh, add some fuel into the intake of this car and force this engine rich and see in the scan data if we can get this downstream O2 sensor to react to this rich condition. Now what I want to do is uh, add fuel to the intake right now and see if we get these O2 sensors to detect this uh, rich condition. So adding fuel right now And the downstream and the upstream O2 sensors reading that rich condition right now. So the downstream sensor is able to detect a rich condition. So cutting the fuel right now. And the downstream O2 sensor going back to that lean condition and the upstream starting to switch again. You see, the uh, downstream is again packed out at around zero volts. So let's repeat the test. Let's add fuel again. And both the upstream and the downstream detecting a rich condition, cutting the fuel, both going lean, only the downstream staying lean, and the upstream is starting switching again.
Now, what have we learned so far? Our upstream O2 sensor switching between lean and rich, no problem there. Our downstream O2 sensor pegged out at a lean condition under normal circumstances, but when we add a propellant and force the system rich, it will actually read a rich condition. So what are our options? Let's think about this one. For the computer to set this PO420 code, it's looking at the downstream O2 sensor. And just like us, it's not seeing what it's expecting to see. So it's not happy about this, so it's flagging this code. Now, um, this downstream O2 sensor is pegged out around zero volts, and we can actually drive it rich by adding fuel, but when we take the fuel away, it will drop right down to that zero volts. Uh, I told you guys that a catalytic converter can actually store oxygen, but it cannot store a lot of oxygen. It cannot sustain a lean condition for a very long time. So that's not our cause. So uh, let's take a look at our catalytic converter and let's do some more detective work and solve this mystery. Now what we saw is that in front of our cat, our upstream O2 sensor is totally fine. We are reading rich and lean conditions here, so that's what we are supposed to see, no problem over there. What we see at our downstream O2 sensor, that it's pegged out around zero volts. And zero volts would indicate a very, very lean condition. So have we got a downstream O2 sensor problem? Well, we actually forced the system rich and it was reading a rich condition. So I actually think that the sensor is doing what it is supposed to do and there's actually a very, very lean condition behind this cat. Now how can it be that in front of our cat everything is fine, but at the back of our cat we've got a lean condition? Now only if somewhere along the way oxygen is added. So let's take a closer look to the catalytic converter on our car. There is actually a problem guys, a little crack in our catalytic converter just in front of our downstream O2 sensor. So let's uh, get this uh, cat out of there. Well this is our uh, actual catalytic converter that came off of our little Peugeot. And uh, although this is a 2014 or 2015 car and it hasn't run a lot, uh, the actual cat looks quite fine. But on the bottom, over here, on the edge, there is a crack, as you can see. And oxygen is entering the cat over there and forcing this downstream O2 sensor into a lean condition. Now, when you see it like this, it looks quite obvious, but normally this cat is packed in this heat shielding and believe me, you couldn't see it and you couldn't hear it. All I did is put the puzzle pieces together and decided there had to be a leak somewhere in this system. Well, I don't know if this is a common problem, but for all you guys in the field, if you got a Peugeot 208 with a 1.2 liter three cylinder engine, 2014-2015, and you got a PO420, don't just replace that cat, guys, because if you take your time and you open up the heat shielding, you can actually weld that crack and it will be fine, and it will save you hundreds of euros, okay? And for all you guys watching this video and you think, well, in my country, uh, we don't have any Peugeots, it doesn't matter. All the things you saw today, you can do on any car, okay? The only variable, you can have a wide band sensor, and I will come back on that in a later video. For all you guys, thank you for your comments on my recent videos. I really liked it. If you want to learn more, please subscribe to my channel and you will get a notification each time I post a video. Well, guys, diagnosed then, fixed it again. I've got the cat welded up, and this is the result. You see the upstream O2 switching 
and downstream voltage steady. The voltage came up a little bit higher is what I told you guys but that's okay as long as it is a steady voltage. I had a similar cat laying around in the shop and uh, someone got his car diagnosed at the dealership and they told him to change his uh, catalytic converter. I did this for him and uh, I had it laying around and now uh, I got curious so I opened up the heat shielding and it has the exact same problem so uh, you can weld it up no need to replace it it will save you hundreds of euros so let's see this is the other cat same problem so uh, see you next time guys